lakes of northern Canada to the Gulf of Mexico. Wherever fish are biting, that's where we're gonna go. There's a lot of exciting country just waiting to be explored. So join us now in the great outdoor world of Virgil Ward. Championship fishing with Virgil Ward, three-time world and national freshwater fishing champion and member of the Fishing Hall of Fame, is brought to you in part by Johnson Fishing Companies. And now, here is Virgil. Welcome to our show. We're glad you could join us for a bass fishing trip on Lower Bull Shoals Lake. After a couple of washouts due to stormy weather, Dan Galusha, outdoor writer from Milan, Illinois, and I finally found the bass and the weather cooperating at the same time. Dan does a lot of fishing, attends several sports shows, and writes for the magazine Midwest Outdoors. Our sponsors have some of the finest products in the world. Let's take a look, then we'll be back to try our luck on those Bull Shoals bass. Headquarters for our trip to Bull Shoals Lake was the beautiful Rainbow Inn, owned and operated by Carter. There, we won't go very fast, but just ease on around this point and go back to this next cove. Okay, good. I think what I did is I hit that hit stick. Hit the stick? I think so. Although I was out from there a ways. All right, well, they hang around sticks. Let me try that again on this side of it. They don't really hit that hard, do they? <laughs> I, you know, I, I thought, felt like they really hit hard, but hey, you get to thinking about it, they really don't bust it. They just, just barely tick that thing. Hey, he's doing pretty good. He's on a real light line, and it's pretty good fish. See him down there. Gee. <laughs> Whew, about 12 pounds. I think he's one of those smallmouth, uh, Smallmouth type. I'll tell you one thing, if I get him in on this six pound pass of four, which I got, pretty fair fish. I haven't been able to see it, all I can see. <laughs> oh, good grief. <laughs> That's a... <laughs> oh, now I know what you mean, smallmouth. Drum. Big old drum. He nailed that thing, didn't he? He sure yeah. did. I don't have a net. I don't know how to get him in there. I'm getting that thing in my hand, which I don't want to do. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, you know where there's any pliers? Yeah, I've got some right here. Yeah, he tried to get the whole fish down his gullet. Yeah, I don't need him. Man, he like tore the hooks off that thing, you know? Yeah, he's big enough. I didn't think that little old line would hold, but it did. Mm. Well, we're getting, getting fit here to see if we can't come up with a good bass. Yeah, it wouldn't have been too bad if that one would have been a nice bass. At least it gave you some fun. Yeah. I just, I just got that lure down good, and he hit it. Well, looks like he's putting up a pretty good fight now. Yeah, here. he is. Boy, he's fighting hard as that. I hope that's not another drum. That's what I, if you got another drum. If he, 
He's fighting hard as that drum did almost. I haven't seen him yet, I don't know. Well, come on there, you son of a gun. He must, ooh, ooh, that's a good bass. Yeah, got a nice one there. No drum. Come here, baby. No wonder he fought oh, hard. My golly, yeah, that is a nice bass. I thought, man, surely not another drum. <laughs> Yeah, I hit him. I hit him hooked better than I thought I did. A while ago, I thought, oh, gee, that, when I first saw him, I thought, that's just barely in his lip. Yeah, you know, I believe that bass is getting ready to spawn. Looks like it. It's starting to sure have some does. eggs in it. And they're about the right size. That's about the right size to spawn. They say after they get over five pounds, their spawn isn't, uh, it, that it won't hatch. But they just absorb it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything to it or not, but that's what they say. Well. Let the old gal go. Yeah, somebody else can catch her. What? How were you fishing at that, Virgil? Well, I just uh, cranked it down real fast after I made my cast. Got it down maybe six, seven feet, something like that. And then reeled it very slow, just about as slow as I could. And then once in a while, I'd just give it a little bit faster turn, you know. And then make this bait dive a little and stop. And as it started back up, that's when they hit. Hmm. That's when that big drum hit a while ago. Just hmm. to start back up. Well, it looks like it's going to work for everything that we got in here. Well, I hope so. <laughs> well, let's get him. Yeah, got oh, a nice one here. Yeah. Oh, he's fair. Not bad. Not a bad one. Getting around here so I don't get the hooks in my fingers. You cranking that in real slow when you got him? <sighs> You, would you turn your reel handle slow or No, I was, uh, yeah, I guess he did. He hit it when I was going slow with it. Yeah. Ah, yeah. that's a good fat little bass. Yeah, that one looks like it might have a few eggs in it, too. Yeah. I think they're getting all ready. Well, they're all small, they're, but... All I of mean, them are good bass. A lot of they? eggs. <laughs> oh, yeah, every bass is a good one. Yeah. As long as you can land it, ain't landed here. Right. Go on home. See your big brothers. Were you about halfway out from the bank and he hit her? Yeah, just about. It seems like that's where most of them are hitting. After you get out about halfway, that's where they hit it. Yeah, that does. It seems like that's just It's about getting a little right shallow location. here. Why don't we move on around the other cove? Okay, good. Right. Oh, you just barely got him, yeah, too. Sure did. Don't get that hook in your hand. I know it. That's a dandy little bass. Sure is. I better get off here. I'm going to be out on the bank in a minute. How did he hit? When you first threw in, or? No, just after I started my slow retrieve. Just exactly after I started it. Huh. I had the fast retrieve there where I cranked her down right at first, and as yeah. I started in slow, took a good shot of it. He gave you a good fight. He sure did. Nice little bass. Toss that over about two feet from the bank, crank her down about 10 turns, and then just ease her in. Seems like they, they like it then, just about the time it stops when they hit it, usually. I think it's smallmouth, I'm not sure. Really? Yeah, yeah by golly small it line. is. Good smallmouth. Yeah, sure is. And I caught a drum and a, some black bass, and now a smallmouth if I get him in. I haven't caught him yet. Okay. We have a complete smorgasbord here. <laughs> Got everything but carp, I uh, still. Still trying. All you need now is a crappie, a white bass, and a trout. And we got the full. I give that a little twitch and stopped it. I saw the line go slack. He must have boosted it forward. 
You know, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to, to detect the strike when they boost it forward like that. Yeah. Okay. Little brown eagle back. Maybe we can find some more of those. Yeah, they're fun. Oh, those clouds are beautiful, aren't they? Yeah, they look like big old cotton balls up there. I just assumed there wasn't so much wind along with them, though. No. Yeah, you're not kidding. Dan is a good fisherman. He works hard at it. He doesn't give up when the fishing is slow. Greg Ward's with us. He was fishing from another boat. You know, those smallmouth bass down there in Bull Shoals really took off. Uh, I can remember three or four years ago, it was kind of rare to catch one of them. We caught several while we was down there. Right, and uh, some of them pretty good size. I think one of those Dan caught was probably three and a half pounds. That's right, and uh, there also is a few stripers in that lake, I guess, too. Yeah, you think the fishing's good there now. You should have been down there in the 60s. Boy, I'd like to have been. I I'll tell you what, it wasn't any big deal to go out and get a string of, get your limit of bass that would average five pound or better. Boy, I'd like to got into that. That was some kind of lake, and it held up longer than most lakes in the area. Mm -hmm. it, in fact, today, it, it's pretty good. You know, you, compared to other lakes around there, you can almost always go to Bull Shoals and pick up a, a fair string of bass. Mm -hmm. And Norfolk's awful good right in there now, too, yeah, just Norfolk. below uh, Bull Shoals. Actually, Norfolk, I think, probably has more stripers yeah. than Bull Shoals. I believe they keep stalking it. But what about those trout that they're raising in Bull Shoals? Yeah, that's right. They've got a lot of trout. Uh, the dock uh, there at Bull Shoals had a net full of them that they raised from fall to spring, and then they turned them loose in the lake, too. Yeah, they feed them, they get fat, they get big, turn them out in the lake. I've heard mm -hmm. of them uh, catching trout out in the lake that were chasing shad, trout that would go 10 pounds on top water. Oh, that's, that'd that's, be fun. That's something, isn't it? You can count on our sponsors for the finest quality merchandise. We invite you to look it over. And we'll be right back with more Bull Shoals Bass Fishing. What do you got there? Pretty nice smallmouth. Because that's a dandy. Yeah, he's a nice one. Boy, don't let him jump off of that. We had that rod doubled over. Yeah, he's got the hooks around him here, too. He's got it. You got him hooked in two or three places. Yeah, got all three hooks. There we go. Yeah. Hmm. He wanted that bait. Yeah, he did. Well, looks like he's full of spawn, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, a nice fat belly on him there. That That's a, nice... a beautiful smallmouth, I'll yeah. tell you that. That's a nice smallmouth. He got well, both those, two or three of those hooks in him, and he couldn't do anything much. Could not he? too much, no. Not hardly. Well, old feller, I'm going to let you get back in here. Uh, what do you got? Another, another think, small mouth? I don't know what's Kentucky. No, that's no? a large mouth, I guess. Yeah. I, I thought it was Kentucky for a little bit. I couldn't quite large tell mouth. from this angle. I think I can just lift him in there. Yeah. You know, when we got here yesterday, and all that rain, I didn't think we'd go catch anything. So, no. We haven't done too bad, you know. No, we sure got so clobbered. Far. Sure got clobbered with that rain yesterday. Oh, man. That was something. Just wouldn't stop. Wind's bad today, but still catching a few fish along. Well, that's the important thing. You got a little better one there, haven't you? Yeah, I think so. Do you have? What is it, Kentucky? I think so. Okay. Looks a little, look a little yeah. like it from here. Yeah, that's Kentucky. Yeah, that looks like it. There we go. Yeah, he felt like he's a lot bigger than what he was, but he's not too bad. 
Yeah, he's a little Kentucky. Those, those Kentuckys put up a battle, you know. Oh, yeah, he really socked it. For their size. size. Yeah. Well, they, they fight almost like a, a smallmouth. Yeah, and a smallmouth puts up a good scrap. They do a lot of boring down instead of jumping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Trying to see what that was. Yeah, he's not fighting too bad there. Hey, he's not that big, but he's... Get him down there where I can get a hold of him. About twice as long as that plug. Yeah. <laughs> this is a pretty long plug. They can... Plug. Yeah, with those three treble hooks like that, too, they flip just right. You get all those hooks in your hand. Yeah. This must be fairly deep here. Well, we're 15 feet. Huh. Ben, you know that big drum I caught a while ago? Yeah. They got rocks in their head, you know that? Yeah, I've heard that. Now, they'll, uh, they'll get under a boat sometimes and rub those rocks together, and you can hear them sound like they're something grunting under there or grating, you know? Make quite a, quite a racket. Yeah, I've heard that they take those uh, stones out of their heads and then they polish them up and use them for jewelry. Yeah, that's, somebody told me they did. I, I've never seen any of it, but... It'd be interesting to see some of them. Yeah, I've heard oh, a while back somebody or other was telling me about it, that they polished them up and used them for earrings. Yeah? They're kind of an unusual piece of jewelry. There. It's a dandy. What and what did it weigh? 31 and a half. What is your name? Royal Corn. Where do you live? I live in Mountain Home. I've got a rod and reel service down you, there. You get to uh, fish here quite a bit? Yeah, I do. I fish four or five days a week. Boy, that's that's something. 31 and a half? 31 and a half. And you had time getting them in, didn't you? Took me an hour and 40 minutes. Gee well, that's, I, that's something. Yeah, it was eight pound line and a deep we are. Have and you just, caught any other stripers out of here? Not out of Bull Shoals. I catch a lot of them out of Norfolk. Boy, that's, that is a dandy. Dan, did you talk to the fellow that caught that 31 and a half pound striper? Yeah, I talked to him, but I didn't find out much information about it yet. Cause... Well, that's some kind of fish, wasn't it? Oh, that was a really tremendous fish. I talked to him, and he said he t it took him an hour, I believe in 40 minutes, to land that thing. He, he caught it on an eight pound test usually eight pound test line. Mm, that's that's some fish to get an eight pound test line and get it in. Yeah. Next time we go out, we'll get one just like it. I hope so. <laughs> there was a time a few years ago when 10% of the fishermen caught 90% of the fish. That doesn't apply anymore. Thanks to professional fishermen who hold seminars over the country, also to fishing shows, that teach people how to catch various species of fish across the nation and in other parts of the world. Then there are the outdoor riders. Many of them do an excellent job of educating the public in the art of fishing. To name just a few, there's Dan Galusha, who writes for Midwest Outdoors, Steve Price, full-time freelance writer who writes for Field and Stream, Outdoor Life, and Sports of Field, Brent Frazee of the Kansas City Star, Tom Colings of the Des Moines Register, and Tim Rinkin of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. I fished with each of these men, and I can tell you they're hard-working writers who get much of their information firsthand. We'll be back to show you some of the lures we use to take those fish, but first, this word of advice from our sponsors.
One of the lures that we used to take those bass with at uh, Bull Shoals was a long bill, deep running one. And we used it a little bit different than what we would a crankbait. We'd toss it out there, and then we'd crank it down to about 10 feet, and it would start coming back up. And uh, then we would crank it a little bit farther. And when it, when it really, when they were really after it, they would hit it just as it started to raise up, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when you took up the slack with your reel, you they could feel it. Mm -hmm. uh, barely feel them. You know, another good lure is this uh, live rubber jig and perk tail, and it works real well for uh, the Kentuckys and smallmouth. Well, we use it, just throw it out there along the edge of the bank and flip it up and down like this and make that thing work and just pull it out there. And usually they'll hit it, you know, uh, when they're, uh, the lure is falling back. Yeah. It, it's supposed to look like a crawfish or something uh, like yeah. that mm -hmm. as it comes back up. We want to thank the folks at Rainbow Inn, the Bull Shoals Dock, and their crew for their help and hospitality. We want to thank you folks for watching. Until next week, so long, and good luck with your fishing. Championship Fishing with Virgil Ward has been brought to you in part by Bass Buster Lures, Johnson Reels, Vincota Motors, Johnson Spoons, Kmart, Mercury Outboards, Berkeley Trilene Monofilament Fishing Line, Ranger Boats by Forest Wood, Ranger Trail Trailers, Bass Pro Shops, Hummingbird Depth Finders, Magic Catfish Bait, and Hyper Aircraft. Championship Fishing, America's number one rated fishing show, is a weekly outdoor presentation being directed to the entire family for their viewing pleasure. Products, transportation, and lodging are provided for commercial consideration. soon in the great outdoor world of Virgil War.